So John the Baptist's um, message, his ministry, his uh, role as the forerunner brought us success. There was this anointing of the Holy Spirit, this conviction and power of the Holy Spirit, and people from all walks of life were responding, putting him in this position of success, this position of influence. And the temptation that whenever we're in a position of influence or a position of power or a position of responsibility is to abuse that power. And we've been working through the third of John's responses, this challenge of truth of how John stayed on message to avoid himself becoming uh, distracted by the success. He remained focused on the message given to him to deliver. And that was to prepare the way for the Messiah that he needed to uh, help people to repent, to be baptised, so they would live right and avoid becoming rough, to prepare them to encounter Jesus. And we've seen that there's a picture of Jesus coming, and when Jesus co came, his role was to separate the wheat from the chaff, verse 17. And what we've been seeing is that the grain is a picture of those disciples, those parts of, or those parts of our life that are useful and need to be gathered it together into the barn. So if we are believers in Jesus Christ who are living as disciples and we're gathering together as the people of God, there's a picture of us coming together and each grain of wheat coming together creates more potential for the future. And Jesus is separating that from the chaff, the useless part of the, har of the, uh, of the wheat harvest that needs to be removed and burned up in order to create a purity within the harvest. And John the Baptist tells us that Jesus is coming to clean up the threshing area. So he's coming to clean up that space where um, the, the grain and the chaff is being separated. For centuries, the religious leaders within Israel had, had religious systems that created barriers to people getting close to God. There was a distraction from the core message by being allowed to get a focus on things that were not core to that call to be the, the witness, the light to the nations. And God's heart was always for relationship. We see that in the Garden of Eden, that when he created humanity, he would come and walk with, um, walk with humanity in the Garden. There's a picture that God was craving relationship. He wanted relationship. And Jesus coming to clean up the sifting area is a picture of, of God wanting to restore things to how they were always meant to be. Church is supposed to be a place of purpose, a place of power, and a place of message. And disciples are supposed to be about loving Jesus and loving God, um, and of learning more about Jesus and more about God. And that training in, of discipleship is about growing in that relationship with God to become more and more the people that we were designed to be so that we can take that message to other people. For John's time, this picture of the, for, uh, of the forerunner saying that the Messiah was coming to clean up the threshing floor was a picture of Jesus coming to clean up the religious systems to make it possible for people to get close to God. And I wonder in today, does Jesus need to come and do that with his church today? Does he need to come and clean up the threshing floor? Will we really let him be Lord of his church? Will we really let him get rid of those things that stop us from having the depth of relationship or really understanding what it truly means to be disciples, what it truly means to be in a relationship with him? How easy do we make it for people to get to come and discover Jesus and to come into a relationship with him? Or are we distracted by a bit like um, you know moving the, the chairs around and the decks of the sinking Titanic? John the Baptist's ministry was a success, and we've seen that he had um, uh, to make a choice to, to stay true to be successful and avoid the pitfalls of success. And we see he was presented with three challenges. He was presented with the challenge of status, the challenge of power, and the challenge of truth. And I hope that as we've unpacked this over the last uh, few sessions, I hope you're beginning to see things that we can learn from his example so that we don't make the mistakes that other people have made so that when we start to see success we can build on their success to see more and more success and be more and more useful 
and not fall and not make mistakes. I pray that this part of the series of John the Baptist has helped you to reevaluate what you do and how you would deal with success to avoid falling and making mistakes.